Hello. I featured these before. It's an AJA uh, Kona 4 professional video capture card and it can take SDI uh, inputs from professional equipment and it can also connect to a breakout box. I have one of those and I've demonstrated it. But a big failing of these is that the fans fail. So I'll get you looking a little bit closer at this and you can see how uh, to remove the fan and we'll set about replacing them. There are several uh, possible difficulties. Uh, firstly, the, you need to work out how to release these posts and a closer look at them when you've got them off, because this one come off already, is you just squeeze the two halves together on the back side of the board and then they will pop off. But then you've got the difficulty that the fan tends to get stuck to the processor and this is one I did earlier. I had a terrible job managing to separate the fan. I figured if I'd just put a screwdriver in here and wrenched it, I could have damaged the board or I could have pulled the uh, processor off the board. So I used a fine blade and eased it in the gap there between the sealant, the, the heatsink compound and the fan and eventually was able to pry it off enough that I was able to free it up. Uh, and on my other board it actually just came off easily. But then we had the difficulty of disconnecting the fan. I thought it was a, a plug and socket connector but it wasn't and when I pulled it I ripped the pads off the board on this one. On my other one I've learned my lesson and just cut the wires. So I worked out where I could pick up the uh, plus or minus five volts or plus five and ground uh, from over here some time ago. I'll have to find it again because I've forgotten. And so we can connect a new fan, not to these pads that have been ripped off, but to the locations on the board over here. On this one, I won't have that difficulty. I can just solder straight to these, uh, these wires. Okay, so I've ordered some fans. Now the difficulty is, if we look at the specifications of the original fan, it was 5 volts, 0 0.5 watts. And could I get any of those fans? No. So I'm having to make do with some fans I bought from China, which are a slightly different specification. Let's uh, get them out. Well, they're the same make as the original. The connector is subtly different, of course, because this one's soldered straight onto the board for some obscure reason. And this is... 5 volt 0 0.35 watts so it's very slightly less powerful is that going to matter i think not it's certainly going to be an awful lot better than no fan at all and since these fans fail so regularly uh you know that's uh, where we would have been at so firstly let me check to see if this is mechanically fit before we fit some uh heat sink compound on here just a tiny bit which is spread really thin with a blade like this uh, there's a bit of a undulation there a bit of a lack of smoothness on this so there is on the original so fair enough we need to make sure that these pins line up and fit and we'll hold it on the board so I'll just do that now before we uh, go ahead Yes, looking at the original fan underneath there and the replacement on the top, the holes are in identical positions and the thicknesses appear to be, well, close enough. The replacement fan is very slightly thicker. Hmm. Is that going to be a problem? Is that going to stop us mounting this fan? I think I'll do a dry run of fitting it before I uh, put the... Uh, heatsink compound on. Okay, those um, fittings do go through. Okay, those supports do go through okay, despite the extra millimetre or two of thickness. So yes, those pins fit through nicely. I know I haven't got the uh, heatsink compound in there yet, but uh, that's going to be absolutely fine. So I just need to solder this up to the relevant places on the board. And this one, I'll heat shrink onto these wires here. Oh good, I'll just spring these off for a moment. Uh, 
I do worry they sprang off a little bit too forcefully because of that extra thickness. If you look there, the shoulders here, it's definitely a bit deeper. I guess I could drill this out a little bit, maybe. That might be the idea. If I drill this out a bit and give it some more depth, then uh, that will the pin will go in a bit further. That might be worth doing, actually. So you can see there, I've got about two millimeters of that shoulder I've got to drop down. I've got to try to drill that rather accurately so that the pin can fit through there and not apply too much pressure, which could allow it to pop off the board. This is all a bit of a nuisance. I really wish I had the original fans Special for it. Special delivery. Ooh, wonder what these are. So while it's possible to fit these alternative fans, which are readily available on eBay and the likes, instead of the original, uh, having original fans would be even better. Let's see what we have in here. So these have been supplied by the original uh, manufacturer, AJA. Notice I have bare wires for soldering onto, oops, the pads that I've managed to break. And they have the uh, lower shoulder, which is important. And the rating is, well, it's rated in amps this time. Let's do our maths. We now have 0.11 amps times the 5 volts so 0 0.55 watts whereas original was 0 0.5 so it's at least as powerful. Now of course the thermal compound is only there to take out the undulations in the two surfaces I'm not trying to make a sandwich out of it so it needs to be very thin. Okay I'm happy we've got a very thin film applied to those surfaces. Okay I've got to pick up the um, supplying ground positions from over here. So I'm seeing the uh, plus 5 volt position here and ground here. So I'm going to connect the fan across this capacitor. Okay that one's uh, ready to try with the uh, wire soldered up there. Uh, it's a little bit fiddlier to do than it might look but we can't all be uh, Lewis Rossman. So um, now this one, I've got the benefit of having not ripped up the uh, original wiring, so I'll solder the wires to that. also want to clean up this a little bit more first. While you're here, uh, any of you who watched my video recently on repairing a Digital 8 camcorder and the um, zoom control on the top panel of it will notice uh, I have a little spring here. So uh, that could come in handy. Notice when refitting these fans that there's an arrow there. So that'll be pointing upwards to get the uh, hot gases to uh, escape the top. OK, what I've done is I've pulled the wires out from this. It's an IDC type thing. So we should be able to just drop these wires in and push them into the IDC and make sure they make contact. So I'll push them in, but not cut them until I've made a measurement to make sure that uh, they are making contact through the wire. Okay, all done and metered out. Uh, my bit of advice would be if you're reusing the IDC connector as we have on this one, is to actually push it in with your fingernail rather than with any tool uh, and that way you're not going to cut the wire. Just going to uh, get it to uh, make good contact and I have metered that and it's all fine. So uh, both of these cards are now ready to install the machine and test. Here's our target machine. It already has one of these cards installed and that's connected by a big cable at the back here to the, uh, move that out the way, the AJA breakout unit here. And I'm gonna have that connected to uh, one of my HD cam units to just provide us with um, the colour bar test pattern that we can do a long capture with. Well, that's still recording fine after almost an hour. So uh, that's the card where I had fitted the fan into the IDC uh, connector. Let's do the one where I've soldered the wires on. Well, alas, no, the one where I've soldered the wires on, we're getting this error 
unsupported AJA device and we're getting it straight away even though the fan is spinning because I've put my finger in it and it definitely is spinning uh, this card does not appear to be working at the moment so I want to swap it back out for one of the working ones back to one of our working cards and that's uh, ready to capture again so uh, for whatever reason the card where we did the soldering didn't work let's have a look under the microscope to see uh, if there's anything I could have done that's stopping this uh, card from working so there's my soldering onto the capacitor which has the 5 volts and as you can follow here that there's a uh, 5 volts comes out from this regulator through this choke and there's plus 5 volt digital so that's there and then this is the ground side and that's connected to the ground of a lot of the uh, board so I don't think I've done anything illegal there obviously you wouldn't want to connect to the 5 volt analog rail somewhere if there is one but uh, here's the original pads pads that were were here connect to these through plate holes and they are still live I can still meter them but there's no way I can solder to them uh, it might be a little bit deceptive just how uh, small they are because we are looking at a microscope that those holes are absolutely tiny so there's no way I could get any solder to stick to them and you can't see where the tracks go on the back side of the board on the back side of the board all we see is this so it's obviously a multi-layer board and where those tracks go inside is a mystery well I don't know about you but I don't think there's anything wrong with the way this has been done I think the uh, 5 volt is not the reason that this card is not working there's likely some other fault somewhere, some other damage. It might be thermal damage from overheating the chip that's under this uh, fan, or there may be some mechanical damage somewhere that I've missed. I wondered if for a moment that the uh, base of the fan might be touching some of these capacitors and so producing a short circuit somewhere. But bear in mind, it's the original part, so it shouldn't. And taking a close look there, I think we can see that there is very small clearance between the capacitors and the uh, base of the heat sink. Well, it's really small. There's nothing wrong there. We were very careful when we removed the fan not to damage the uh, BGA soldering. So uh, I don't see any reason for it to be uh, dysfunctional but nonetheless it is. Now I remembered something I'd had a problem with some of these cards not being recognised until the firmware had been updated, but the firmware would not update in all machines. So I popped the card which we'd had the problem with into uh, one of my HP Z800 computers, and in there it immediately said, please update the firmware. Good. So I updated the firmware and then it was recognized okay but the software wouldn't launch the capture software okay no problem I put that card back in my target machine and yes it would capture brilliant so I have three of these cards one that was brand new on this one it was reading 60 Celsius in normal operation then there's a the card where the IDC connector was still intact and I'd pushed the wires onto there and changed the fan and that was reading a bit hotter around about 70 Celsius but it was still stable and would capture for a long time like that and then there's this one where I had soldered the wires onto capacitor because the lands had been pulled off the board this one uh, got really hot it was reading over 80 Celsius and still getting hotter and hotter at which point I stopped so something's wrong here let's see what we can do so these are the original fan types this was the Chinese one which would need the shoulder drilling down this is an original fan but with the soldering onto the capacitor now I don't know why it's still getting so hot but I think one thing we should probably do is to take the fan off and have a look and see if I've done something wrong with the heatsink compound so we just squeeze these pins it looks absolutely fine 
why don't I have a go with one of these fans? We know it's got potentially less blowing capacity, but I can't imagine it being any worse than that one. So I'm going to solder those wires onto there somehow and fit this. But first thing I need to do is drill down these shoulders slightly so that these sit on the spring rather than with the spring fully compressed and then this in danger of popping off the board. Right, uh, that uh, now has the alternative slightly lower power fan installed. Uh, let's uh, try that one. Okay, here we are running with the lower power fan and actually the temperatures so far look pretty good but I'll leave it running for a while and see how we get on. So the board where I'd made the mistake and pulled the lands off, that now has the fan which I'd bought on eBay, which though being the same manufacturer is a lower wattage than the original manufacturer's one. But it's working really well. The temperatures are actually lower than this board here. It's got the original manufacturer's fan fitted. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I should uh, redo the heatsink compound on that. So I now have three cards. There's that one, which we've just fixed. There's the one I'd changed the fan and there's a brand new original and I also have another one of these cables with these small connectors going to BNC. Does anyone know what these connector types are because I could use another one of these cables or at least make up something if I can get hold of some of these plugs. I think one of the main things actually to take away from all this is well you can change the fans and another is that if you get a board that doesn't work, experiment with putting it into different machines until such time as maybe it'll pop up and say it needs a firmware update. Update the firmware and then hopefully it will work. Hope you've enjoyed us working on these AJA Kona 4 SDI capture cards. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Yeah.